We're talking with Colonel Willingham about uh, a day in 1955 that is uh, utterly extraordinary. And the story is all the more extraordinary because he lived it. He was in the Air Force. He is telling the story now. And there are so many people in the military who know things, see things, experience things, participate in things, who take it with them. This is one of the men who did not do that, and we are uh, eminently and eternally grateful for this information. All right, Colonel Willingham, if you would, sir, please take it from the top. 1955, what was happening on that day when this whole thing began to unroll? Uh, we were assigned to a wingtip watch over a 47 that left up in New York came down through Oklahoma and down through Archer County and back over and went and heading to El Paso, and we spoke to fly cover for it. Now, when you say a 47, you're talking about a B-47? Yes. Okay. And why were you flying cover for a B-47? Well, I wasn't told why I was supposed to. I just told it. <laughs> I'll bet you uh, were just told to do it. Could it possibly be that that B-47 was carrying a certain something in its bomb bay? It could have had. Okay. Just Pretty just, heavy uh, one, too, I think. Just fishing. Okay. All right, so you're flying cover. Uh, you and how many uh, fellow There's pilots? Four of us. Four of, of, all right. four of us out of Dallas. Were you boxing? Out were of you, Fort Worth. Out of Fort Worth. Were you boxing them in front and rear and side to side? Yeah, just exactly. All right, I got the picture now. B-47, for any of you who want to know, can simply type in B-47, the numerals, on any search engine, you'll see a picture of this uh, this jet uh, bomber, uh, which was carrying, obviously, a very special cargo at that time on that day. All right, sir, go right ahead. We was flying along there, and uh, my buddy back there said he, on my unicom between the aircraft, mm -hmm. Uh, he said, hey, look at that big star falling or every what it is over there. And I looked at it, and they, everybody else looked at it, and, and I said, you sure that's a star? I said, it looks to me like it's something else. And it was real bright. Finally, it made a 90-degree turn at 2,000 miles an hour, and I didn't figure it was. Well, shooting stars so we and meteorites did. don't change course. Not like that. That's, that's right. So uh, I asked the uh, captain on uh, 47 if I could trace it and see where it was going because we didn't know what it was. He he came back in a few minutes and he said, yeah, go ahead. Just you, though, not the rest of them. So I took off down there and when I got to where it was, it was right below Langtree, Texas. On the, uh, over on the Mexican side. That thing actually just took a, a absolute flat on out 90 degree change in direction at 2,000 miles an hour, leaving a, a contrail of some kind behind it. Right, right. That must have just knocked your eyeballs. It sure did. <laughs> I was hoping to have one by the next year that I could fly myself. <laughs> Spoken <laughs> like a true aviator hero. That's great. <laughs> All right, so it makes a 90-degree turn. At that point, did it begin to descend below your flight altitude? Yes, sure did. We were flying along about 35,000 at that time. It, it, I took off after it, and it all hit just about the time I got about halfway there. Okay, you you it dropped below you. And then I had, I had to kind of circle around. Mm-hmm. And uh, that time, the Mexican uh, government had started uh, sending in their troops over. All right. So by the time you took you five to eight minutes to drop down to get close to the deck to see this thing, which uh, you could tell, I guess, from uh, before you got there, had come in for some kind of an impact landing. Well, I don't think it was trying to land. I think they'd already lost control of it. I see. Or that was my idea. Mm -hmm. right, and, as, you're, uh, as you're coming down uh, toward the, the Rio Grande River, and you're coming down, and this thing is on the ground, as you approach it, 
What do you see exactly? I Is just see where he had hit about a hundred yards up from the water bank and uh kind of bounced a few times and just kept on going uh, I'd say it went out through there about a thousand yards. Did you actually see it, Colonel, hit the ground? Well, uh, I didn't actually see it hit the ground. I think it, when it finally got stopped, I had got that close. I see. That I could see it. Uh huh. But right. it was breaking up pretty bad there when I seen it. Now you're flying your F 86 down. You see the object on the ground. Uh, it had been down for no more than maybe 30 seconds by the time you flew over it, something like that? It, it's right. I made one circle around it. All right. And looked it over, and then I headed back to my job uh, after the B-47 yesterday. All right, so you had to climb way back up to 35,000 feet or thereabouts to assume your position in that box formation of security around the B-47 bomber. Well, uh, the bomber had already nearly got to El Paso. All right. And they were going to take another team to fly a wing for it on uh, to Arizona. Okay, understand. So uh, they called and told me, said, no, you can go on back to the base, and you want to go out there and look at that anyway. And I said, yes, I do. So they, I took mine and went on back, and about five minutes after I was there, or maybe ten, uh, the rest of them came on in. And the we other landed. three, your other three squadron uh, mates, okay? Yeah, that's all where right. we were stationed at the Carswell Air Force Base. All right, Carswell. Yeah, all right. When you flew back to Carswell, uh, checked your F eighty six in and then went back to the crash location of this disc you had seen come down to earth and hit the deck about 100 yards from the Rio Grande River. We'll do that. Well, I just... sure like to got in trouble all the time, too. Yeah, all right. You hang on. This is a great story. I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Yeah, I parked the car. I had gotten the car. It went down to Corsicana, where I used to fly out of that base down there. All right. And picked up a light aircraft and flew down to where the crash was. So I went on down there and found the place that was clean enough I could sit down. Uh huh. And I sat down. And uh, did the, you have any trouble that, finding the location of the crash from the air? You remembered it pretty clearly, I guess. Yes, I did. I still got it right in my mind right now. All right. You just go from Langtree, Texas. Okay. Right straight to the river, and just on the other side of it was where it hit. All right. You landed how close to the crash itself? I'd say I was about 150, 200, George. That's damn close. Okay, when you got there, what did you see? Well, I started up there, and here come all these Spanish... Uh, Soldiers come running over, and they were all armed. <laughs> and I put up my hands like uh, being arrested, you know, or something. Really? Were you still in uniform? Yeah, I was still in my flight suit. Could you see and the cra- could you the vehicles on both sides? All right. Could you see the craft itself? Yeah. Yeah. I went in there, and I was talking to this uh, Spanish uh, lieutenant. Uh, anyway, uh, I talked to him, and we walked down through there, and he said, i never seen anything like it before. And I said, no, I either. But I said, this sight's a little different than some I've looked at. All right, so the lieutenant gets there. You walk up to the craft itself. How close did you get to it, Colonel? I, I walked right up and kicked a piece of it. 